raunchy sounds of Gyoko. A Tokyo band, its name means fishing port. Perhaps only in Japan could a passion for fish lead to a career as a rock musician. Gyoko's lead singer believes he's writing anthems for a lost generation. One that's forgotten the true meaning of what it is to be Japanese. Next fish. Yassa <laughs> <laughs> By day, the band members work at a Tokyo fish market. Obsessed with tuna, they try to bring a little of their craft to their music. is yet to break over Tokyo, yet here at the Skiji Market, another performance is already underway. As buyers prod the tuna, the auctioneers bark the bids. Tuna is one of the world's most sought after and expensive fish. Some fetch more than the price of a luxury car. Japan's poaching of southern bluefin tuna is one reason why it's so scarce. The nation's fishing fleet is rapacious. It would have had severe repercussions on the east coast of Australia, but especially in Port Lincoln, thousands and thousands of people would have been out of a job. That is just because of the criminal intent by the Japanese over catching to those those in this massive scale. I wanted to get involved in Port Stevens. Once you start, once you South Australian tuna fisherman Hagen Stare is outraged and outspoken, and he can afford to be. He jumped ship in Port Lincoln almost 50 years ago. Since then, the German-born former foreign legionnaire has amassed a personal fortune. It is actually international fraud when you come to think of it. It was absolutely fraudulent. It is actually criminal. As Australia's Commissioner for the Conservation of Southern Bluefin Tuna, Glenn Hurry initiated an investigation. The findings were damning, prompting him to brand Japan's catch as almost unforgivable and tantamount to an act of piracy. We'd been concerned that there was a level of overcatch in this fishery for some time, but we'd been unable to actually prove anything. All right. yep. Thanks, we were genuinely annoyed because I guess we'd been through about 10 years of negotiations with Japan. For the past 20 years, Japan has exceeded its legal limit. It's plundered an extra 178,000 tonnes of southern bluefin tuna. Its value, somewhere between six and eight billion dollars. I know Mr. Harry quite well and he is an absolute diplomat. But I can assure you, those figures are very, very conservative. 
In fact, Australian authorities concede the true figure is much higher, in the vicinity of 250,000 tonnes, worth in excess of $10 billion. What is so upsetting is that as could have sacrificed the Australian industry, it is skullduggery, it is an international crime, it's fraudulent, it's straight out fraudulent. Now I know it's not diplomatic to be able to say that, but it is fraudulent. The initial disbelief and indignation among Japan's fishing authorities has given way to a sense of national embarrassment and shame. Yuichiro Harada is the head of OPRT, the organization for the promotion of responsible tuna fishing. Well, of course, we are ashamed that the incident of a catch happened. The controlling mechanism was not uh, effective. Australia declined to launch a prosecution in the International Court of Justice. Instead, Japan has accepted its southern bluefin tuna quota be slashed in half over the next five years, a tacit admission of its guilt. It's a matter of principle. Japan uh, you know, declared uh, to be a responsible fishing nation. And in order to maintain such position, once Japan admitted the failure to comply with quota, then it's inevitable to accept reduction of quota. Japan is now looking to clean up its own backyard. The Shirasagi is patrolling the waters off Kobe in central Japan. Captain Masaki Shimojo and his crew are at the forefront of Japan's attempts to conserve fish stocks, some now severely depleted. <laughs> And the competition is cutthroat. For the right kind of fish, not just tuna, there's big money to be made. Illegal fishing is rife. Small fishing boats with their lone fishermen might seem like mere tiddlers, but with vast areas to patrol, Chief Officer Tomoaki Takeda is personally affronted by Japanese fishermen flouting the law. As supply dips and demand grows, it's the spectre of organized crime, the notorious Yakuza, that spells danger for the men of the Shirasagi. This tape illustrates the level of danger. Little wonder Chief Officer Tomoake Takeda fears for his life and those of the crew.
For tuna wholesaler Suninori Ida, it's the potential harm to his business that counts. Slicing quotas and a crackdown on illegal fishing will have an impact. Wielding a knife like a samurai sword, the man known simply as the boss started work here almost 50 years ago. These days he considers China to be the major threat to the fish that's been the mainstay of his business. Japan has only 2% of the world's population. Yet Japanese eat a chunky 10% of the global fish catch. The national appetite seems almost insatiable. Immersed in the culture is Katsumi Honda, who's a sushi master. This self-styled guru of Japan's favorite dish runs a popular restaurant in suburban Tokyo. もう not only has Japan's southern bluefin tuna quota been cut, so too its Atlantic bluefin quota. Finding other ways to satisfy Japan's demand presents a golden opportunity. Amami, a remote island off the coast of Japan, could be crucial to the country's future tuna supply. Its sheltered and deep water harbours contain scores of tanks and cages where tuna caught at sea are being fattened for market. Scientists at this fish farm run by Osaka's Kinki University believe they've achieved something special. Investing billions of yen they claim to have pioneered and perfected the technology to breed bluefin tuna from hatch to hook. This massive fish has lived its entire life in captivity. Yoshio Okubo, the chief of this corporate venture, is naturally excited by the potential for profit. マグロの需要というのはもっともっとあの現在も増えつつありますので、その関税の施行方法を元にですね、持続的に養殖が世界中でま安定的にされていくというふうなことを考えると、あの十分コマーシャルとしては、あの利益を生む事業だと思っております。the promise of the technology hasn't convinced everyone. Purists insist that farmed tuna is inferior in taste and quality to wild tuna. Sushi masters like Katsumi Honda claim they'd never sully their reputations by serving farmed tuna to their customers. 
っていうのは貝エビをね美味しい餌を求めてね一年中回遊してるわけですねそれに加えてあのそれに対して養殖マグロ畜養マグロっていうのはねまあ網の中で動きがある程度制限されますよねそれと餌ですよねスネノリイダ holds the pragmatic not priggish view that consumers will eventually acquire the taste for farmed tuna だからその養殖を使うランクのお客様はうちは少ないというでもこれからはどんどんそうなっていくと思いますあの天然の資源がどんどん減ってますからねそれを保護するためにも養殖がこれからどんどん増えるしそれをどんどん扱うお店のシェアが増えてくるし The coastline of Japan is dotted with small fishing towns reflecting the richness of the country's cuisine and culture. Recognizing this, the government is funding a scheme designed to renew the nation's domestic fishing fleet. Akira Ono sees it as almost a duty to keep alive the traditions of generations. 自分たちが取らなくてもなんとか生活はしていけると思うんですけどもやはり日本人の場合はその歴史的に自分たちで魚を取ってそれがまあ文化の一部になってたりとか。For all the vagaries confronting Japanese fishing, including serious competition from the meat industry, the romantic notion of a life at sea hasn't been entirely lost. Recently divorced, Akira Ono has abandoned a near 20 year corporate career for his own sea change to try his hand as a fisherman. I think I'm going to be able to eat a lot of food. I'm going to be able to eat a lot of food. I'm going to be able to eat a lot of food. I'm going to be able to eat a lot of food. Is central to Japan's cultural heritage. In fishing ports and villages around the country, it's traditional for communities to celebrate the fruits of the ocean. In future, it will be cause for celebration if Japan can sustain its newfound commitment to conservation. Thank、you